So when Apple released the 2019 Mac Pro, I think a lot of us were shocked. $6,000 for an entry level eight core machine is not something that we really expected. Now, don't get me wrong, you can spec that machine all the way up to 28 cores and 1.5 terabytes of RAM, but at that point, you're all looking at $40,000 probably. And no doubt that has some use cases for the professional workspace, but for the middle range mainstream people who just want a powerful machine, I'm talking the content creators like myself, designers, developers, those sort of people are sort of left without an option if you want to enjoy Mac OS. I know a lot of people were holding out for an eight core Mac Pro that's around three or $4,000, but $6,000 is a bit too much to ask for in my opinion. So I wanted to see if it was viable to build something yourself around uh, the Mac OS software. So here we've got a 9900K and a Radeon 7, and it's a pretty powerful machine. So having never built a Hackintosh before, I wanted to see if this was viable. If you could build your own eight core machine instead of having to fork out $6,000 for the new Mac Pro, I wanted to see how fast it is and if there were any stability issues as well. So again, this is my first Hackintosh build, first build using PC hardware to build a Mac OS system. And uh, it was challenging to say the least. There's a lot of mixed information out there. And depending on which guide you stumble upon, you could either have a successful build or a really frustrating one. And just to clarify, this is not a guide. There are plenty of useful guides out there, which I will link in the description below. I will also link uh, a lot of the files that I used to get this one up and running. So if you guys wanna imitate this one or replicate it yourself, I will leave those files in the description. All right, now let's talk about the specs of the system. And to start with, I'm going with Intel's i9-9900K. Most of you know this chip, it's an eight core, 16 threaded CPU that can turbo up to five gigahertz depending on the load. And it is currently Intel's fastest mainstream desktop CPU. Now I know a lot of you are wondering about AMD Ryzen CPUs, why I didn't perhaps go with that? It's just that Intel CPUs are a lot more stable in Mac OS. Of course, this is because Apple themselves in their own machines do use Intel CPUs. Now the 9900K is expensive, no doubt at 489 US dollars, but it is still $700 less than the eight core Xeon W 3225 that's in the base model Mac Pro 2019. Now, obviously that Xeon W chip is expensive for a reason. It does have a lot of server grade qualities on offer. For example, ECC memory support, 1.5 terabytes of RAM, uh, AVX 512, for example, you're not gonna get that on the 9900K, but most people building an eight core machine don't really care about those features anyway. And probably one of the most interesting components of this build is the AMD Radeon 7. That's the GPU that we're using here. It is currently AMD's fastest GPU, and it's also the fastest natively supported GPU in the latest Mac OS. So for this build, I am using Mac OS Mojave 10.14.5, and the Radeon 7 is simply plug and play. No need for additional text files, no need for modifications to the config files. You drop it in and it's good to go. In fact, during testing, I was able to easily swap out the RX 580, the Vega 64, and the Radeon 7 between benchmarks, and I didn't have a single issue. All right, now the motherboard choice is a pretty important one when it comes to Hackintosh systems. And here I'm using the MSI Z370i Pro Carbon AC. Honestly, it's the only spare Z370 ITX motherboard that I had spare. So luckily it worked. The only two things that do not work for this build because of the motherboard are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. but I'm pretty confident that you could get those things running if you didn't have the right files on hand and if you did look for long enough. For those of you also looking to build a Hackintosh system with the 9900K and the Radeon, 7, I would probably advise against an MSI motherboard or an ASRock motherboard. Definitely go with a Gigabyte or ASUS motherboard. Those seem to have the strongest compatibility from what I've researched so far. And for RAM, I'm going with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Flare X memory. That's clocked at 3200 megahertz just by enabling XMP in the BIOS. And lastly, for storage, I'm using a single 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe drive just to keep things nice and simple. And the case that I'm using, most of you are familiar with on the channel is the NK M1, nice and compact at 12.5 liters, full aluminum construction. There's no doubt some more Mac-like looking cases out there like the Ghost S1 and the Circle Pro, but I think the NK M1 is going to be the most practical to build in. I also recently did an ITX case roundup where I talk about some of the best ITX cases that I've ever reviewed. And I gave the NK M1 the best overall because it does have that nice fine balance between sort of all of the features that you would want in an ITX case, being compact, looking nice and minimal, 
and it also does have the highest cooling performance out of any case that I've tested under 20 liters. So when it comes to cooling the 9900K, for example, which is the chip that we're using here, the NK M1 far exceeds any other ITX case that I've tested. It's able to cool a 9900K overclock to 4.9 gigahertz at around 75 degrees C. All right, so with the parts out of the way, now let's talk about the performance. So starting off with the classic Mac OS benchmark that is Geekbench 4. And here our Hackintosh does top the chart for the fastest single core performance out of the stack. It's even a few hundred points faster than the 27 inch 2019 iMac Pro running the exact same chip, the 9900K. Switching gears to multi-core and we still get some very respectable scores, settling right between the 10-core and the 14-core Xeons that you'll find in the 27-inch 2017 iMac Pro. Now in Cinebench R20, the system was consistently scoring a little over 5,000 points for the multi-threaded rendering test. I don't have any reference data here against iMacs, for example, but you will find that it's similar to what the higher core count Xeon iMacs will be pushing out. Now when it came to a real-world task like Blender, we're getting some really impressive rendering time on the CPU, right in line with what you'd expect from a 9900K Windows 10 machine. For SSD speeds, as I said, I'm using a single M.2 NVMe drive for the system. And as you can see, there's no real need to go messing around with a RAID 0 setup here to try and replicate the real Mac Pro. Here we're seeing write speeds at 2,500 megabytes per second with read speeds just under 2,900 megabytes per second. Okay, so CPU performance is very, very strong. The 9900K is putting up some really respectable numbers. So now now let's talk about the Radeon 7. So as I said, the Radeon 7 doesn't need any additional files or funky work to get going. It is natively supported in Mac OS 10.14.5 and the performance in Luxmark definitely shows its potential. So here it takes a 64% lead over the Vega 64 when rendering out the Luxball scene, a 27% lead in the Newman scene, and 41% for the Hotel Lobby. These scores are also around three times higher than what you'll get with the RX 580. However, switching to Geekbench 4 for the GPU using OpenCL, I actually found the Vega 64 to be slightly faster, although realistically the two here are within margin of error, we can virtually call them identical. Seeing as the Radeon 7 has only been recently supported natively in Mac OS though, we can probably guess that Geekbench 4 is lacking the proper driver implementation for the Radeon 7, whereas Luxmark seems to have that dialed in. Looking at gaming performance here using the Heaven 4.0 benchmark, the Radeon 7 is about 22% faster than the Vega 64, and overall did seem to be fully utilized in this benchmark. So if you are looking to build a Radeon 7 Hackintosh build, you should be fine. There are some apps like likely that won't be uh, fully utilized in terms of driver optimization, but no doubt that will come in due time. I also would have loved to test Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Maya, uh, 3ds Max, a lot of different uh, real world programs. The simple fact is that I didn't have the time. This build already took so many hours, you guys would have no idea. Having said that though, I would love to do additional content for this build. I do have the RX 560, 570, 580, Vega 56, Vega 64, and of course the Radeon 7 in here. I'd love to test all of those GPUs in Mac OS because looking online, that doesn't seem to be done yet. And I think that could be a pretty useful video for those who are looking to build a Hackintosh and to see sort of how much GPU performance they need. So let me know if you guys are interested in that video and I will add it to the list. So overall, this build does seem to be a pretty viable alternative to the $6,000 eight core Mac Pro. If you are looking to build your own eight core Mac OS machine, this is something that I can recommend. Of course, you do need to install it yourself and build it yourself, although the installation process is pretty straightforward with the guides that I'll link down below. And of course, you know, not being an actual Apple machine, you don't get customer support. You don't get you know, Apple customer care or warranty or anything like that. Of course, you do get warranty on the individual parts, but when it comes to customer support, you're pretty much on your own or limited to Reddit or forums, for example. In terms of stability of the system, everything is rock solid. Like I said, the only things that don't work are Bluetooth and wireless. In terms of the system sleeping and waking, it's all fine. Uh, really nothing else that I could complain about. Mac OS is running pretty smoothly. Of course, you do want to disable automatic updates because if you do have an update that does come around, that could potentially brick your system and undo all of your hard work. So let me know if there is some interest for additional Hackintosh content out there. Would you guys like to see a Hackintosh guide? Any Hackintosh benchmarks, for example? As I said, I would love to test additional GPU performance in Mac OS. So 
let me know if there is some interest for that. I will also leave the links to the guides and the files that I have used to get this build up and running, as well as all of the parts. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.